Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. There are alternate channels for this YouTube channel. You can also find alternate channels um, where certain prophecies that used to be here in 2020 and 2021 and 2022 are now being hosted. Those are prophecies that, re that refer to pretty much what happened in 2020, the onset to the Great Reset, um, the introduction of widespread global emergency measures and the truth about um, COVID and its introduction into our societies, those things are no longer hosted here. The Lord protected those things here for um, the better part of two years. And then when they began to get highly controversial between, um, I would just say, the owner of this platform and certain things are being done to the videos, um, God said to just remove them because there's no point in jeopardizing the overall amount of hard work on this channel. But there are at least, um, I would say altogether, maybe 30 videos um, related to that. And so they're worth looking at. There's a playlist on Brighteon for sure. That's called the medical playlist. And there's a playlist on BitChute as well. And the videos are scattered here and there on Rumble. However, Rumble doesn't have a playlist ability. So unfortunately, I'm not able to or um, offer that. There's also a Spanish language channel receiving excellent help in translating these prophecies into Spanish. And that channel is here on YouTube. It is called La Voz del Señor. And you can find it in the description box along with the links for the other three that I just mentioned. So if you are a new subscriber and you want to have access to some of the things that I share on my community page, the community page is where I sometimes break down in more detail these prophetic words because it's writing and writing comes easy naturally for me. Or sometimes I share things from my personal life that the Lord is revealing, just things from my own personal Bible studies, questions of the day, and things like that. I share that on the community page, but only if you are subscribed to the channel can you actually see the community button pop up. And today I am I am making this prophecy from June 2020, I mean, from June 21st, 2019 about flooding. And the reason I'm making this prophecy is because several people alerted me to the fact that specific words of water disasters and flooding that I brought from the Lord against the nation of Australia and against the nation of New Zealand are coming to pass. I did not know about these things at all just like I did not know about the tragic, tragic, horrible, devastating earthquake that took place in Turkey. I did not know about um, these things. So it, 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 the, the, the earthquake in particular is extremely devastating because when I found out about it, um, it was such a high death toll of 4,000 people. And I remember pausing and saying, Lord, Look how many people have entered into the final times without even so much as a breath, without even so much as, as being able to, to come awake and to pray a prayer. And many people in Christianity always think that there will be time to pray a prayer. So we don't live our best life toward God. We don't give him, um, the full of ourselves. We don't give him our best time. We don't give him our best attention. Our lives are so busy now. Our lives are so complicated now. Our lives are also under attack and being buffeted one way and another way by the economy, by the powers that be, by politics, by um, fiscal policy, by lack, by stress, by no sleep, by fear, doubt, illness, by um, rejection from families. There are so many things that come into our lives. But instead of integrating God into the center of self, we put God as one of the compartments that we're dealing with. We're dealing with our marriage. We're dealing with the kids. We're dealing with the financial situation. We're dealing with the fact that there's 20 people up for promotion and we want to get the promotion. And so God has his box. Instead of us coming to an understanding that 
if God is not the box and everything inside it, then sooner or later our lives become a, a falsity that we keep insisting is a truth. Our lives become a falsehood that we keep trying to convince ourselves is the real deal. We act as if we have these strong and powerful relationships with God, but I am here to tell you there is always room for improvement. It is the tree that wants to get burned up at the end of days that will tell itself, I'm okay, I think I've grown enough. And so being able to walk with God and centralize God in our lives is the greatest honor and privilege. And if you are a Christian and you are living anything less than your best life, I'm not saying it has to be a vibrant and successful life. Your best life with Christianity is where you are doing the very best you can to let this man upstairs know that he is your first priority and he will walk with you even if you are in a valley right now you may not get the chance to say goodbye. You may not get the chance to repent. You may not get the chance to take back words that you spoke not meaning to speak them. You may not get the chance because Turkey is an example of the fact that the end times are real, that they come suddenly to all flesh, and that sometimes it's two or 3 a.m. in the morning, you're in REM sleep and you simply do not get the chance to say, God, I am sorry, please forgive me. Do you hear how long prayer is to repent? Is there time in the blink of an eye when 10 or 12 stories collapse on you to do all that? Always make sure that you're right with God before you close your eyes at night. Don't carry your sin around with you like a tail. Lay it down at the altar. Even if you have to wake up the next morning and struggle with it, lay it down while you yet have breath because breath is not promised to anyone. And so subscribers let me know that Australia and New Zealand are being flooded, just as the Lord said. And just to, to clarify, I already see that these disasters are being written about in the almighty new God of our times, climate, climate. So there's, there's not a lot of boxes to put truth in. And you have to understand that the people of the world, for as long as they do not bow their knee to Jesus Christ and submit until the day, of course, where the Bible says every knee must bow, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess. But there's plenty of time before those wills happen. And so whenever things that we are supposed to be viewing through the lens of biblical prophecy happens, the world will always cast it according to one of their genres, one of their themes. And so when, when the earth starts going haywire, as the Bible says that it will, the birds will be taken away. The animals will be taken away. These things are in the prophetic books that we will see what looks like almost mysterious culling of animals, huge schools of fish washing up on the beach, deep sea creatures coming up like whales and other things just getting stuck by the ton sharks washing up out sharks washing up here and there birds just dropping out of the sky by the hundreds then then it's it's climate or the sun was too hot or the moon was too cold but god has a completely different viewpoint of these things viewed through a biblical lens the earth is in bondage to sin and as the sin increases Earth also is paying a price that we people would never connect with our sinfulness. Earth is basically stripping herself down. She is stripping herself down to the bare bones because she already knows, even if the earth cannot read, she already knows that Apostle Peter says that she is reserved for fire and that before she is consumed in fire in the end times, the finality of God's wrath, well, many things are going to be taking away, taken away. And one of those things that's going to be happening is flooding. The title of this prophecy is catastrophic flooding. It is June 21, 2019. That makes this prophecy very old. Um, it's several years old. And even though it's several years old, and I'm going to speak about Australia and New Zealand at the end, this prophecy is actually talking about a time when not climate, but the judgment of God is going to make the weather extremely broken. The weather is going to be completely 
unreliable. It's going to be sunny in places that it was never sunny before. It's going to be raining in dry areas that usually get one to 10 inches per year. That's all they get. And now they're going to be getting over 300 inches. There's going to be extreme flooding across the world. Um, I, there's a prophecy that already has a video. It is called the floods are coming. I will link that in the description below. And God said in that prophecy that he is going to be punishing places like India, Pakistan, and many, many countries in Europe, India and Pakistan and countries like that. Um, I think Uzbekistan and many other countries like that. God says that he will punish those nations because of idolatry, because they have the wrong gods, so to speak, because they don't worship the one true God, but they are in, um, they worship other things. They have a different religion. And God is saying that that is not the knowledge of him. That is not the knowledge of his son. That is not life lived in his spirit. That is the practice of idolatry and floods will be coming to those places. For Europe, God says that it's because of the hedonist lifestyle, a lifestyle that does not honor God, a lifestyle that sees God as a curiosity, a lifestyle that just sees God as a, as an interesting complication, as a literary conundrum, something that you read about in books, he said that your crazy ancestors used to believe. Re remember that these places, Paris and Germany and England used to be burning hot centers of faith at one time, albeit far, far in the past, but still these nations had at least a form of godliness. They had men in there. I think Martin Luther was German. I'm not sure, but I think he was. And so these people once flew very high flags of faith, but now they've lost their way. And God says that their lifestyle is extremely sensory. It's greatly focused on good food, good drink, good wine, good sex, good experiences, traveling, um, saving your money for retirement, and then um, enjoying your retirement with your spouse and things like that. And so they literally don't make space for God at all. Europe went cold a long time ago. And God says that now it's not only the insult that there is no faith in these nations, very low faith, flickering lights of faith, but also the new generation of young people over there are starting to say that what's wrong with their ancestors' religions and their ancestors' faith. And so they're starting to declare proudly that they are heathens. They're starting to declare pr proudly that they are pagans. They are going back to their roots. They're going back to the old ways, the ways of the mystic people, the ways of the Druids, the ways of the fairies going out into the woods and dressing in white gowns and being a wood nymph and having these um, orgies or things like that. All these things offend God. Mankind is working so hard to offend God in these times. And therefore, when we offend God, the earth is going to retali retaliate. And so that is why in the prophecy called the floods are coming, the Lord said that many places will begin to flood. When it comes to, just a moment, please. When it comes to Australia, the places that were mentioned were Queensland, Victoria, and Auckland. And God said that these places are going to have high numbers of sickness, disease, and death. And that is because they were very complicit in taking the harm and the harm that boosts. And that is why they will have record numbers of that. He also said that this place called Queensland um, will sink and go underwater. So he said that it will either he said it will go underwater. So either this place is going to sink and go underwater or it will experience flooding to the point where it is effectively underwater. And I saw the place called Queensland. I don't actually know the place, but it looked like a basin type of area. And it was being filled up with this very eerie looking, looking type of greeny blue water that you can't actually see through. And that kind of water filled up that place up to 70%. So I always clarify that the prophecies the Lord gives me here are not 
the kind of thing that I will speak to you today in February and then you will come back in March or you will come back in June and say, well, what's happening with the flooding? I live in Queensland and we haven't seen anything. I'm reading a prophecy from 2019 and you might still be standing on dry ground in Queensland. And that says nothing about the fact that God says that 70% of this place and many other areas in Australia, at least in Queen Queensland, will be under water. And he says that he will punish Queensland, Victoria for sin, and they will be affected by water. And I thought that very strange when the Lord was saying that because Australia, for instance, is not the kind of place that is known for water. It's it's not famous for water, at least in the global lore. That's not what we know it for, for. We know it to be mostly a very hot and a dry place. But God says that abundant rainfall basically will start to hit Australia and it's judgment for sin. And he says that because Australia is godless, that Australia has become shockingly secular and has put God aside. And yet he says that he lit the candle of faith and especially worship in that country. He said that Australia used to be a very bright lamp and Christianity blazed forth from that nation to cover the whole world. And you cannot talk about Christianity in the last 30 to 40 years without mentioning at least, if not the theology, the songs of Hillsong that have transformed generations of Christians and brought and kept them in faith in the Lord. He says that Australia started a faith revolution and was legendary in how it lifted up the name of Jesus. And the nations flocked into their temples to worship the true God. But now Australia is cold, fallen, has a form of godliness, but completely denies the righteous power of it. They have fallen away and have become reprobate. In another prophecy, the Lord actually said that Australia has become a goat nation, stiff-necked and seeking man instead of seeking him. But he said that after he chastises Australia, after he has punished this country sincerely and I guess broken their stiff neck, he said that he will restore this nation back to sheep status. With New Zealand, I saw that God said, I saw a tsunami coming. So in New Zealand, it will definitely be a tsunami that comes. The Lord says that the water will completely rise up over this country and destroy it because up to today, New Zealand is still offending him by worshiping, respecting, and venerating the gods, the gods. That's what he called them. And I began to see pictures of this kind of face. It has lines, 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 and very flaring nostrils. And some of them have their tongue sticking out. And some of them have this very fierce and angry look. And some of them have feather necklaces around the neck and big rings in the earlobes and the nose. And God says that you are still worshiping these gods. You are still calling these gods your ancestors. You are still performing rituals wherein you ask them to give you wisdom and guidance. God says as if he did not exist, as if he was not there. And when I first made this prophecy um, a year ago, I think it was, a few people from New Zealand came and said that it's a tragedy because even though Christianity is there, um, people, I think it is the Maori, but I'm not sure, but they still make it a point of fact to preserve the rituals that respect and follow these gods. And yet God says that in Exodus chapter 20, verses three to five, it says, I am the Lord, your God. You shall have no other gods before me. The Lord said that Christianity is right there among you. It is available to you, but you are still wearing feathers and dancing. You are still calling the gods to favor you as you go out to hunt. Therefore, I will destroy you on account of your gods. And so I shared that the Lord was saying, they worship the earth, the sea, and the sky, celestial. They call on gods who are not me. They remember to keep all the requirements of their gods, but they cannot remember me. Cursed is the man who puts faith in the creature rather than the crea creator. I will cast him out of my presence for he is profane, unholy, and unrighteous. And so these are the things the Lord was saying about Australia, fallen to secularism, 
has become cold. The light of the gospel has dimmed. The lamp that used to burn brightly in the country is now basically tossed aside as people are much more focused on whatever the medical boards are telling them and whatever is going on in politics. And basically the focus on Jesus has shifted right out of the picture. And now Australia is very man centric. As for New Zealand, um, the Lord has said that one day the sea will rise. Just a moment, please. The Lord has said that one day there will be a massive tsunami in New Zealand as punishment for ancestral and ritual worship. So what is the healing to these ills? What is the answer to these things? The obvious answer is repentance. The obvious answer is that there has to be some form of national awakening. It doesn't even matter what country is watching this prophecy right now. There has to be at some point, man has to stop. People have to stop. We have to stop pushing off responsibility for the lives that we live, even us as the church. The church has become largely irrelevant. The church has become a clique that gets together and comforts itself and tell itself, oh, look how our flame is burning brightly and look how we're experiencing renewal and refreshing and look at how fresh we are. And the thing is a huge rotten fruit that God is not pleased with. It is not a powerful, evangelistic, life-changing move. People hear about Christianity and like, yeah, okay, but have you tried yoga? And have you tried Kabbalah crystal burning in the midnight hour? People are not interested. We are simply one option among many. And we always want to convince ourselves that no, 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 we are a pungent perfume. But I assure you, these prophecies from the Lord tell us that we're definitely a different kind of smell and it is not a perfume in his nostrils. And so the prophecy I will now look at is the one called catastrophic flooding. I will leave all these links in the description. And basically just to go through it quickly, God says that water is going to be pouring into cities as he washes away the iniquities of the nation because the nations are defiled. The nations spill blood. The nations are filthy and commit all manner of unrighteousness. I will cleanse the earth of all her burdens. Please hear this part. I will relieve her of her inhabitants. When God says that he is going to relieve the earth of his inhabitants, he is talking about both the animals that I mentioned in the beginning. The sea will be relieved of her fishes, her lobsters, her crabs, her shrimp, and her deep sea huge mass animals, some of whom we have never seen before. But the earth has other inhabitants. She has mammals here on the surface. She has birds that fly across the face of the firmament, and she has us that live here. And God says that he is going to start taking away the inhabitants of the world. And so what I saw is when I woke up, this was a vision that the Lord gave me at about eight o'clock in the morning. And what I saw in front of me was a very big wall. I saw a very large wall, um, not a modern wall. It was these ancient cobblestone walls that you can find in Jerusalem or the type that the ancient cities like um, the Greeks and the Romans would build. And the wall was gray and a man in olden clothes, you know what they just used to wrap the cloth around? He came and he had a very big black marker and he wrote impurity. And then he wrote unholiness. And then he wrote unrighteousness and he walked away. And right after that, another man came with a marker and then he wrote the word lasciviousness. Lasciviousness refers basically to all things sensual, all things sexual, all things perverted. It basically just means drooling after the sensory, the sensual, and the sexual. And then he walked off and another man came and wrote one short word, the biggest word of all, and it was simply filth. And these are the indictments that God is bringing against the cities of the world. So God is not talking about small rural communities. He's not talking about places where you have to travel three days by car and then four more days by camel to finally penetrate some jungle place. He is talking about the built up modern cities, the place, the places where people are coldest. And mostly people are coldest because they have access to everything. They have access to food, access to water. They have electricity, Wi-Fi. All the services can come to their door at the drop of a hat. Basically, 
where people have so much choice and so much option that the natural thing that starts to enter us is laziness. And on the back of laziness comes pride and idleness. And all those things are a mix that get us thinking that we are the gods of our own lives and we should create, shape for ourselves the lives we want. If we want to be polyamorous, if we want to have 83 partners in a year, that is our business. That is our feminine or maleist um, freedom. And we should do that. And nobody should shame us because it's our body, our choice. It is in the cities that these things are happening. It is in the cities that people are committing for some weird reason. The most perversion, the most incest, the most horrible acts with their pets that some of us have to see because it is the Lord's expression. It is the Lord's anger and he has to show it to someone. So someone has to see that these women are buying these large dogs, not for companionship. May God help my soul today, but they are buying them for other things. It is in the cities. There was a day that I was walking in Manhattan and I happened to be walking along a stretch where It's just amazing property. And I must admit, I was looking at it and I was admiring it. Amazing property. And the Lord just intervened. And I've said this before. He just said, don't admire it. You have absolutely no no idea what they do in there, in those those million dollar apartments. You have no idea what they do in there. He said that some of the sins that they commit in those expensive high-rises are worse than what the people are doing in the projects. And that was just enough to snap me back to reality. And so floods are coming as indictments, punishments, basically, accusations of wickedness in the world's cities. And as the Lord was speaking, I saw a massive wave of water was being released in the heavenly realm. It was a flood that was coming as a judgment. But the curious thing is throughout this vision that God was showing me, before a flood would happen on earth, I saw the flood released in heaven out of these massive, massive mountains that God has up there. So it is very strange how God has his topography. And I saw these large, large mountains and inside them impossible stores of water sitting in the heavens. And then when people would sin, 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 sin down here, all of a sudden the mountain would just sort of boosh, gush out and this huge wave wave of water would then come out and then floods would hit places. And the floods that I started to see coming are not floods that can just, uh, maybe a flash flood in a city or something like that. And then it's gone. I saw it was these lingering floods that came and swirled and surged and grew day by day until some of them had the capacity to reach hip level and waist level. Um, long ago, the Lord gave me a word, um, that New York would have a flood. And I thought, Oh Lord, you mean it's the tsunami that you've been talking to me about for many, many years. And he said, no, the water will come up to the height of the parking meter. So the next day when I was walking in the city, I just looked around and I have to tell you that a parking meter is not a short thing. It is not a short thing in, in the vision. When the Lord was talking to me about the flood that New York was having would have, I saw that the water rushed down into all the train stations so that that whole thing, the whole MTA thing will become disabled because we all, we all know that water goes to the lowest point first to settle. So the trains were completely incapacitated, but that water not only rose, it rose until it was at the height of the New York parking meters. I saw that people were so desperate in some areas that there's only, only older children could walk in that flood as people were trying to run away, as people were trying to save themselves and evacuate. Only older children could walk by themselves. All small children, if your small child was told to walk, the heads of small children, I'm talking about maybe even your average eight or seven year old would have been completely covered by the water that I saw. And please bear in mind that this is not the tsunami that the Lord says will come not only to New York city, New York city will be completely under the water. And I have discussed that very many times. And so I'm not going to go into that, 
but this is just sort of a precursor, just sort of a warning what the power of God can do and what the power of God can bring upon cities that are hardened in sin. It is possible to become hardened in sin. It is possible for your heart to become calcified and for you to consciously say, I no longer want any part of religion, of faith. Don't talk to me about it. I will cut you off. I will reject you. I will delete your number. You're no longer my mother. You're no longer my brother. If you bring this up to me again, God is not anyone's sworn enemy except the one who becomes his sworn enemy. When you say that you unequivocally, this is never, never will you change, want nothing with God, then there's no door open for you anymore. You have become seared with a hot iron. You have chosen the devil. You have chosen the darkness. And all that remains for you then is to become a child upon whom the wrath of God is resting until the final time. And so um, the title that was given to these floods that were happening all over the world, basically, the Lord was calling it catastrophic flooding, and they will be worldwide floods. So don't think it will be the flood will happen today and every country will start having it. This kind of prophecy is an ongoing prophecy. You will read that these people are having their distress here. You will read that those people are having their distress there. You, This will become a fixture. And it is very easy to see maybe what happened in Turkey or to see what happened somewhere else and think those poor people until the day that we, you, me, someone else um, in, in the country where you are becomes the poor people. And therein is the difficult because what I saw these floods doing is that they brought devastation. They came with so much force and aggression that they took people's children. When this kind of water breaks the barrier of your home, it's going to be that the door is holding, the door is holding, 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 and maybe you guys have evacuated up or something, but then eventually the structures of the house are tired. The structure of the house cannot manage and imagine if it is a country where they may not have the strongest building materials um, to use. You know, not everybody is Japan. Not everybody builds, you know, for earthquake and flood and everything. And so when it's like that, I saw that they took people's children and it was just devastating. People were not fast enough to grab their children out of these waters. People sometimes had more than one child and um you only have two hands and um sometimes you you grab the two that you have and then the water is stronger than you and i just saw people screaming i saw fathers really moving with strength but i wrote here that they just were not fast enough and um i saw a lot of infants taken by this thing and it was just terrible to see Sometimes the children were found very often not alive and many children were never seen again. And there were also inadequate services. So I've spoken about this. Um, I will link that prophecy. I can't remember the name of it. It was just God talking about many things that will come, that Florida is going to have this exact type of water disaster that I'm talking about, that Texas is again going to have this type of water disaster that I'm talking about, that many, many states right here in America. The Lord said that in the middle states, um, new great lakes will form. So we already have great lakes, but he says that the iniquity of America is such that right in the middle, new great, new great lakes will form on the San Francisco side, uh, on the California side there, part of it will break after an earthquake, it will break. And I just saw it sliding into the sea like this. It just broke off like like a cookie, and, and the whole section went under the water. This is with people, cars, buildings, everything. And you know when you have, when you have a natural disaster like that, it's not like the American continental plate, a piece will break off and then the other piece will just stay still. This country, just the way my hands are moving everywhere, things like that will be happening everywhere. The Lord said um, in one prophecy, it's called Dead Men's Source, that we're going to see lava that can move as fast as water. This is the most dangerous type of lava. It's not the slow one where people go and set up cameras and say, this is day 344 and the lava is still three inches from my house. No, there is a lava that will come here as judgment. The ground will literally just tear open 
And the reason he called it a dead man's sore is because when people pass on after a while, their bodies become very bloated and then the skin just tears very easily. The skin, when you are no longer alive, is very fragile. And so um, the ground in America was tearing like that. It was just tearing. And who knew how much lava was just beneath these tears? It was just tearing and it literally just ran over people and they petrified right there. They fried right there. And even though I've never made that prophecy a video, you know, um, these things, they sound like fiction. They sound as if I sit here and I think, what, what can I do? What, what should I do to amuse my, I know I will just say some stuff and nothing could be further from the truth. Everything that I'm saying, God has delivered it one by one with, with such a grave tone, with such a serious tone of voice that I don't even say anything. I don't say anything when I see these visions. I just write everything down and I do my own absorbing. And when I am ready, I bring these messages. And so I saw that people will lose family. I saw that there will be great property loss because of the flooding that will take place. People's homes are going to be damaged and daily life around the world is going to basically be terribly, terribly disrupted with damage in the millions, hundreds of millions, billions proper, probably, because priceless things that you can't replace, such as family ashes, you know, such as handmade furniture, such as things that families pass down one to another. People were in grief and shock and very mournful and angry. And the insurance companies thought that that was the best time to not pay out anything. So um, just a word of caution, don't put too much stock in your insurance policy. They may pay it out now because maybe not pe not a lot of people are are claiming, but when a lot of people begin to make claims, the insurers will simply invoke the act of God clause. So, um, when the world is shifting, they never say it is an act of God. They say it is an act of climate, but when it comes to cash money going back into the hands of policyholders, then they will say it's the act of God. And you know, when it's an act of God, insurance doesn't pay. I saw financial losses because businesses were destroyed. Inventory was ruined. Supermarkets became flooded out and that added a new layer of tragedy. So there's flooding. People still need food. No matter what is going on in this life, you will always get hungry. Eventually the supermarkets could not meet the need. The cash registers were short circuiting because they were underwater stock in the stores was ruined. And in the cities, this caused food supply shortages. I've been talking about food supply shortages before it became popular. I was speaking about it years back in print on the master's voice before anyone started with the word supply chain. I was saying that God showed me that for America being sinful, he was going to create a chokehold around this nation and she would not get her basic goods. And especially the smaller merchants would suffer because they don't get government subsidies. They're not big American farms or they don't qualify for American farm, um, farm blessings. They're just mom and pop stores. And when they order stuff and they can't get it, Jeff Bezos will take all their money because he can always get it and sell it at $10 cheaper. And so, um, God said that he was going to choke America and stop her getting her basic goods. And that's why we didn't get stuff. It is not because of COVID, 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 COVID is just one extra layer in all the punishment that we will bear here because we have basically aborted the population of Pakistan, 60 million plus, and it is not going to go for free. And until people understand that, as long as hearts keep saying, but what about this celestial? But what about that? I can guarantee you that God will keep sending me here with another heartbreaking message until there is silence, acceptance, repentance, so that God can show mercy. Read Ezekiel chapter nine. God sent out five to devastate and only one to show mercy. You can basically use that as the ratio of how judgment will be in the end days. Five strikes of judgment and only one of mercy.
So make sure that you fall under that one, you, your family, and all who will listen to you. And I will just bring this to a close. I saw that the punishment and the reason that the floods began to increase worldwide was because of sin. God was showing me various sins, egregious sins, shocking sins, parents having sex in front of their children, parents inviting their children into the bed with them, women who are on their feminine time of the month still engaging in sexual activity and the men who join them and think that this is okay. God was showing me that this is mostly a European and uh, Western American type of thing because he showed it to me in one way and he did not cover this image. I saw what these people were doing, the grossness of it. And then he showed me something like um, a rural setting, people of ethnic backgrounds, people in Africa, people in the Amazon, people in South America. And they were horrified at the idea that you should have relations with a woman when she is bleeding. They, they were like, who does this? They are separated from their women and they don't touch them during that time. But, um, I saw that it was not a big deal at all. And when I went to check this, because I, I needed to check this. When I went to check this, I saw on Amazon that there's a ton of contraptions that women buy so that they can just be free as if that time is not happening to them. And when I, when these things were happening, I felt aggression from God, not my aggression. I felt aggression from him, how hateful this thing is to him. And this thing is actually in the book of Leviticus, that you're not to come near a female on her time. I saw homosexuality, men with men, women with women. Every time I saw a new sin, a gate would rise up in the heavens and water would slam out or a mountain would gush out a flood. I saw how the Lord showed me a map. I actually saw the map of the world and I saw that 90% of the dots that, rec that represent same-sex lifestyle are clustered here in North America. Would you believe this? That the amount of media coverage this lifestyle gets, the amount of sound bites, the amount of online time, the amount of all sixth graders who want to participate um, need to wear the pride shirt and the national team needs to wear it to show that they appreciate and, and the companies all jump on the bandwagon every June because they need uh, that money. I saw that globally reflected 90% of the dots tiny clustered on clusters on the world maps 90% of them were were concentrated in north america and not even so much canada or anywhere else almost solely the usa hmm the lord showed me china and russia india pakistan bahrain this place called abu dhabi I think it is Dubai and the Philippines. And in those nations, the image that God put over those nations was the love of procreation. This is man with woman. I saw a picture of a house. The image of home was reflected on those nations. A woman giving birth, receiving her child in a blanket and a man coming and embracing her. And the Lord was saying that the strength in those nations, the reason that their population is trending upward so fast is because that they keep his natural order. Notice that he didn't say because they're so holy and righteous and they go to church nine times a week. He simply said that they honor, respect, and keep his natural order. And the Lord said that part of the punishment for floods is that people are sinful against their own bodies. There is an entire series called the sin series on the master's voice. If you watch that series and you still come away arguing that masturbation isn't really a sin, then may God help you because you and him will discuss it at the end of times. And so God is going to judge sin. I'm reading just from the things that I was given on an individual basis, and he will judge it as an aggregate. Individual basis means that you can clean your life and you can walk before the Lord holy. 
and he certainly will show you love. God loves the righteous. God loves people who love his way, who worship him, who praise him. But when it comes to sin being judged as an aggregate, this means that sin will be upon the land. Sin will be upon a nation. And when sin is upon the land, when sin is upon um, a nation, then what you're praying for is not, oh, you know, let the whole nation turn back. As long as you have read and understood Revelation 18, you know that this country is not turning back to anything. You know that she is, is the hardened bull heifer of many visions that I have discussed last year and that she will continue to pull and tug and has already broken the reins and has already run off. And all that is waiting, all that is we're waiting for now is the day when God will move past this needing vessels to speak and act. Jeremiah prophesied for 40 long and difficult years, but the day came when Babylon finally broke through the wall. Babylon broke through the wall and after they grabbed everybody, they told Jeremiah, not you. And he wrapped his cloak around him and moved on to another chapter. So I've covered many prophecies here. One of them is called Scorched Earth. That is the prophecy that deals with Australia and New Zealand specifically, why God will judge them with water disasters and floods. Um, another one is called The Floods Are Coming, and that one is talking about India, Pakistan, and Uzbekistan, and all those nations, as well as Europe, why God will judge them with floods um, for paganism, for idol worship, and then this one called catastrophic flooding from 2019, June 2019, where God says that in general, cities are hotbeds of sin, and therefore they will start to get flooded out more and more because he will wash away their iniquity and he will also take people in the cities away. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Thank you for listening. When you come here, let your heart be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let not your heart be heavy. Prophecy does not take away the rest of the Bible. The word of God is full of promises for you and your family so that you can connect to God's faithfulness. To the faithful, God is so faithful. He is a covering. He is a protection. He is the rest for the weary soul. God bless you. I would just like to add a small note. I want to thank all of you who consistently support me in the work that I am doing, whether I was away or here or not. I thank you for the prayers that you have been praying for me. I've always said that you do not need to worry about my safety. You can lift it up to God, which is surely good, but um, my life is in the Lord's hands and he will do with it what he wants. Thank, thank you for the physical support that you send me. I am so tired of having to say to people politely that if you use cash app it will likely it will likely sit there because my account is not empowered to accept gifts so if it sits there i'm finally saying it that it is not personal if it is canceled it is not personal cash app has no way for me to reach out to you and tell you to take it back so kindly please don't use it God bless you. May the Lord fulfill the prayers that you are lifting up to him. He is always listening. God is always listening. And that is all I can say. Your prayer doesn't have to be perfect. Your prayer doesn't have to have 700 scriptures to prove that you are speaking in the King James. Your prayer, he said, seek me in spirit and in truth. In our everyday terms, that means don't play, pray um, fleshy carnal complaining prayers and just seek God according to a genuine heart and he he will hear you he will answer you thank you so much and until I see you again goodbye